I'm not vegan, but these vegan chicken nuggets from Iceland, it's in a green box if you go to the vegetarian section. They taste better than normal chicken nuggets. So good. <laughs> now, some of you might find this video boring, but it is gonna be so useful to know the different layers of your skin. So I've got my notes here, cause I can't remember everything. And all of this I learned through my beauty therapy course. So the skin has three different layers, the epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous layer. I'm first gonna tell you about the epidermis, which has five different layers. Now these five layers, they have two different names. One's like a Latin name, I'm gonna tell you both. So the first layer of the epidermis is the stratum corneum, also known as the horny layer. This layer of the skin is basically just made up of dead skin cells, that's all it is. And these dead skin cells, they shed throughout the day, all the time, continuously. And here's a little fact, 90% of the dust in your home, it's dead skin cells. Kinda gross. Straight after the horny layer is the stratum lucidum, also known as the clear layer because the cells in this layer, they're transparent and it's mainly made up of water and mostly dead skin cells as well. The third layer is called the stratum granulosum or the granular layer. My beauty lecturer would say that it sounds like a spell from Harry Potter, so to help us remember it, she would be like, stratum granulosum. In this layer of the skin, this is where keratinization happens. So this is basically the cells are turning into dead skin cells. They're going hard and flat and they're getting pushed up towards the surface of the skin. The fourth layer is the stratum spinosum. I'm gonna pronounce a lot of words wrong in this video, I apologize from now. It's also known as the prickle layer. It's called the prickle layer because it has like these connective thread things that give it like a prickly appearance. This layer of the skin has a very important cell called the Langerhang cell. It's very important because it basically, its job is to go around looking for what isn't supposed to be there, any waste, and it helps get them removed. The Langerhang cell is a little bit like a police officer. It's just like looking around, who isn't supposed to be here, what's not supposed to be here. It's like Officer Langerhang. Let's call that cell Officer Langerhang, you know. Especially, so this is in the fourth layer of the skin, so it's the prickle layer. We can call it prickle lane, those rough ends where you need Officer Langerhang. <laughs> Do you know what? You might think I'm crazy, but I don't remember all of this stuff. I need to create a story with it to remember. So <laughs> if half of the beauty lecturers out there made a story with it, it will help you remember the names of the layers. The fifth layer of the skin is called the stratum germinativum, also known as the basal layer. In this layer of the skin, there are two very important cells. One is the keratinite cell. I pronounced that wrong, keratinocyte cell. The keratinocyte cell, it basically does everything. It's like, if this cell is healthy, then your skin will be healthy because it protects, it forms like a barrier against um, environmental damage like UV rays, viruses, bacteria, water loss, it just does everything. In the basal layer, we also have the melanocyte cell. This produces melanin and if this cell is damaged, it produces too much melanin, so too much pigment, and that causes pigmentation. So this cell needs to be healthy as well. So those are the five layers of the epidermis. Right underneath those, there's something called a cell membrane, and this basically connects the epidermis and the dermis together. If this is damaged, boy, I thought I was gonna sneeze. If the cell membrane is damaged, when I say damaged, I mean this could be damaged from an accident or if you get treatments done like chemical pills, if you get too many chemical pills done, it could damage your cell membrane as well. And your skin looks like, it has like a waxy appearance. Apparently, I haven't seen it, but apparently that is what you look like if the cell membrane is damaged. Now I'm gonna tell you about the dermis, which is the second layer of the skin. As we're getting deeper, is getting more and more important. So the dermis has very important cells in there, one of them being the fibroblast cell. The fibroblast cell produces collagen and elastin. If your concern is aging, I can literally hear you <laughs> coming closer to the screen right now and turning the volume up. Like, what, did I hear collagen and elastin? Yes. If your concern is aging, the fibroblast cell is what you should aim for. You need to reach the fibroblast cell so that it can produce more collagen and more elastin. You need to give this cell, 
love and attention. This is the cell that you need to work, you need it to work. You want it to do 50 hours a week, you want it to work night shifts, especially when your skin is trying to heal. Another important cell in the dermis is, they're called mast cells. I don't know why it's so hard for me to say, mast cells. My back is aching. I'm going to call this cell master. This cell releases histamine in response to damage to local tissues. If there's damage in the area, master will release histamine and that's how it heals the skin. Master, good job. Thank you, master. Something else that is important in the dermis is hyaluronic acid. If you are into skincare, you've probably heard of hyaluronic acid before. It naturally occurs in the body, specifically in the dermis. This basically helps keep the skin hydrated and it also helps with forming collagen and elastin. Also in the dermis, we have blood vessels, which helps with oxygen and nutrients, bringing that to the skin. We have lymphatic vessels, which helps nourish the cells and it removes any waste. We have sweat glands, which regulate the temperature of the skin and it also helps get rid of any waste. Ah, this is a very important one, the sebaceous glands. The sebaceous glands produce sebum to hydrate the skin. If your sebaceous glands produce too much sebum, you'll have oily skin. And if you have oily skin, it attracts more dirt to your skin, it can block your pores, um, so you're more prone to blackheads and spots. So if you have oily skin, it could be down to your sebaceous glands producing too much sebum. If you use products that uh, strip off too much of the natural oils from your skin, the sebaceous glands feels like, oh my god, I need to produce more sebum, so it produces even more. That is why some people with oily skin, they use oil to cleanse their skin. Oil and oil, it mixes together, it helps draw out any bacteria and it helps cleanse the skin. If you put oil on oily skin, the sebaceous gland will hopefully start to calm down and tone it down, like, oh, okay, the skin is hydrated enough, so I don't need to produce a lot of sebum. Last but not least, we have the erector pili muscle in the dermis. This is like a tiny little muscle that's attached to the hair and when you get cold, this muscle pulls the hair to stand up straight and that's what we call goosebumps. And when the hairs are standing up straight, it traps the air close to the skin to keep the skin warm. Our skin is just amazing, honestly. Finally, we have the third layer of the skin, which is a subcutaneous layer. I think of this layer as a sofa because it just provides nice cushioning underneath the dermis. Um, it's got like fat cells in there. It's also in charge of thermal insulation. The reason I made this video is so that I can explain this. If you buy products from the high street, so whether it's Boots, Superdrug, Sainsbury's, just a high street brand, I'm first gonna give you a few seconds to guess. Guess what layer of the skin they reach. High street brands reach the first, sometimes the second layer of the epidermis. And I've already told you that the first layer, the horny layer, it's made up of dead skin cells and they're shedding all the time. So if you're treating the first layer of the skin, you're, you're not gonna have healthy skin because it's not doing anything for you. Some high street brands reach the second layer of the skin, which is mainly made up of water and mostly dead skin cells. Again, it's not doing much for your skin. These brands are known as cosmetic brands. Sometimes you feel like they are working, you feel like your skin is more hydrated, but it's just a short-term effect. If you want long-term healthy skin, long-term results, you need to reach the deeper layers of the skin. I'm not saying that all cosmetic brands are bad, some cosmetic brands are really, really good, and you can sort of see that depending on the price range as well. Some cosmetic brands are very expensive, some are really cheap. So you have cosmetic brands, you also have pharmaceutical brands. Pharmaceutical brands are skincare products that you get from the pharmacy. In most cases, you need a prescription to buy them from the doctor or from the dermatologist. Pharmaceutical brands reach the deeper layers of the skin and they're the ones that give you results. In the middle of cosmetic and pharmaceutical, you have cosmeceutical. Cosmeceutical brands 
they reach the deeper layers of the skin like a pharmaceutical product would but you do not need a prescription for them however you need to buy them via professionals so that they can explain how the product works you need to have a consultation before you buy the product Cosmeceutical and pharmaceutical brands reach the deep layers of the epidermis, so the fourth, fifth layer of the epidermis. I'm not sure of any products that reach the dermis on its own, but the way to reach the dermis is by getting electrical facials done. So if you go to a beauty clinic, for example, the beauty therapist will use a machine to push the products deeper into the layers so that you can get results. Another way to reach the dermis is internally so by taking supplements if you take vitamins a c and e you will heal your cells and you will have really good skin because you're going to heal yourself from the inside out and this is more effective if you're not into supplements research foods that are high in vitamin a c and e and make sure you're having a good amount of those now if you do both so if you heal yourself from the inside out and from the outside in oh, you are gonna have amazing skin. So that is why I wanted to explain the different layers of the skin. I'm gonna end the video by telling you the functions of skin. It's really easy to remember because it spells out shapes V. The V is a bit random. S is for sensation. H is for heat regulation. A is for absorption. P is for protection. E is for excretion. S is for secretion and V is for vitamin D production. So those are the functions of your skin. Obviously, another way of remembering shapes V is if you create a song with it. <clears throat> Sensation, heat regulation, absorption, protection, excretion, secretion, vitamin D production. That was horrible. Don't do that. If you found this video helpful and you want me to make more skincare videos like this, please give it a thumbs up so that I know. Otherwise, I'm going to think that you don't want to see them because you find them boring or something. I personally love watching videos like this. I think it's really helpful. Also, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I'll see you next time. Bye.